And we have seen how Anchor Borrowers Program has dealt with rice. Rice was a key embarrassment to us. Economic experts prefer ideas towards controlling inflation. Ten institutions in Lake Chad Basin signed a memorandum of understanding for socio-economic development of the region. Call to Nigerians to remain united amid security challenges for the progress of the country. Let us rise up and work with God to ensure that we serve Him and obey Him. Hello, welcome to News Desk at 6 on NTA News 24, broadcast live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. With the non-oil sector driving the Nigerian economy at 95%, especially in agriculture and cement production, economic experts advocate tightening of Nigeria's borders, blocking revenue leakages and providing alternatives to petrol as ways of controlling inflation. This was while analyzing the state of the Nigerian economy on NTA News and Current Affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria. Joseph Hossein monitored. Nigeria's economy seems to be on a positive transition to increase revenue coming from the non-oil sector to the tune of 95%. This trajectory gets on Good Morning Nigeria attributed to policies increasing food production and support grants to small and medium scale industries. We are actually now a net exporter of cement. And the price and of we, cement, and, and, and the bag of cement is not less than 4,000. Yeah, but it is different. We are not consuming our forex. We don't have an import in that. And we have seen how Anchor Borrowers Program has dealt with rice. Rice was a key embarrassment to us. Because this revenue is available, it's only that it's leaking and a billionaire can exist in Nigeria, he can buy whatever he wants to buy, he can buy houses, he can do this, he can do that, and he's still not paying tax. The guests, however, express concern over high costs of fertilizer, petroleum products, and revenue leakages impacting on cost of living. Uh, if the price of one bag of, um, let's say, 100 kg uh, of paddy rice uh, will not buy you one bag of um, fertilizer, then there are issues there. And that is what is happening uh, now. If that was not the case two, three years ago. But many, of these tank, uh, many of these tankers and uh, thrillers and buses should use gas. Naira, naira to naira, kg to kg, pound to pound, cheaper than using the, the diesel. So that's the, when you reduce the demand for this, then you're actually switching demand. When the government interventions have suffered setbacks, Experts fault implementation processes where corrupt practices play prominence, saying officers need to be more patriotic. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Ten universities around the Lake Chad Basin region, directly affected by insurgency, have signed a memorandum of understanding in Abuja that is expected to assist in proffering lasting solutions to the challenges in the sub region. Olaenka Ojo has more. For more than a decade, the Lake Chad Basin region has not enjoyed much peace and haven't suffered that much. These university vice chancellors from tertiary institutions in the countries around the basin are holding this meeting. Uh, it is basically meant to bring about research and development within the sub region. Since universities study problems and come up with solutions, this meeting with academicians from Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger have agreed to the signing of this MOU. The institutions have also agreed to conduct research that will enable them to understand the remote causes of the problems to prevent future occurrence. And contribute a little quarter in the form of educational sharing, information sharing. Promote cooperation among higher education 
institutions in the lecture basin. Foster mobility uh, between uh, lecturers, the researchers, uh, uh, technologists. The MOU is expected to bring some fresh air, not just to the shores of the Lake Chad, but to countries around it and Africa as a whole. Online Kaoju, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari has approved the payment of Security Depart Department Allowance, SDA, to the deserving retired military officers and personnel. A statement, in a statement, the Special Assistant to the Minister of Defense and Media and Publicity, Mohamed Abdelkadir, says the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Salih Magashi, highlighted the details for the payment of the sum of $134,749,943,243 Naira 69 Kobo to be paid to earlier excluded veterans who retired before 9th of November 2017, while the outstanding SDA allowance will be paid over a period of three to five years. On modalities for payment, the Defense Minister has taken steps to facilitate seamless payment of the SDA to qualified veterans through the review of the effective date of the Manual for Financial Administration 2017 to be handled by the Defense Headquarters while the verification of veterans for the payment will be done by the Military Pensions Board. Amidst another security threat, undosted Governor Uluwaru Timi Akere Dolu is reassuring the people of the state of government's commitment to the security of lives and property. This was when he visited the scene of the Owo construction company attack, where he urged the people of the community not to panic but go about their normal activities as the situation is under control. Abiola Ario reports. Cranbrook Construction Company, which has over 100 workers, was recently attacked, leaving two persons injured and currently receiving treatment at the Federal Medical Center. So it's clear to us that the intention of the terrorists was to attack one or two equipment here, which they did. I'm sure they'll have shown part of uh, where they have their explosive uh, affected the tire and probably the shot at uh, the windscreen of one vehicle. Governor Akredolu, while lamenting the incident, said the construction company has been in our community for over five years because of the peace they enjoy. This is not one that you send unnecessary panic or fear into the mind of our people. They should not panic. Uh, the governor, while reassuring of government's determination to provide adequate security, emphasized that his administration will continue to protect lives and property of the citizenry across the three senatorial districts of Ondo State. In Owo, Abiola Rio, NTA News. The Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Khali Baba, has inaugurated a committee to review documents from the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit and provide necessary information for the effective functioning of the Financial Action Task Force. A statement by the First Public Relations Officer, Olu Muyua Adejobi, indicates that the committee headed by DCP Adegbite Olaolu is to provide data on anti-money laundering counter-financing terrorism and counter-proliferation finance to determine the level of the nation's implementation of the strategic modalities in place to tackle insecurity and financial crimes in tandem with international best practice. The IGPY reiterating the commitment of the force to, to tackling the menace of money laundering terrorism and proliferation of arms financing and joins members of the committee to work assiduously in the attainment of their mandate. The committee is expected to submit its report within one week. Meanwhile, Deputy Comm Commissioner of Police Uche Ifani Henry has been appointed as the Vice Chairman of Africa Heads of Cybercrime Units. In a statement by the First Public Relations Officer Olu Muyua Adejobi, the Inspector General of Police Usman Al Kali Baba lauds the appointment of DCP Uchi Henry while reiterating the commitment of the force in sustaining the fight against cyber crimes and other related offenses in Nigeria and Africa. Until this appointment, DCP Uche is the head of NPF Cybercrime Unit and a member of Interpol Cybercrime Advisory Board, Association of Cybercrime specialists among other professional associations. 
As part of efforts for Nigeria to join the League of Nations that have acceded to the United Nations Water Convention, the federal government has taken several steps, including organizing a national workshop for stakeholders to brainstorm and come up with best ways that Nigeria can utilize its prospective benefits. Thomas Obetere reports. More than 60% of all water resources worldwide are shared between two or more countries. Nigeria shares most of its water resources with neighboring countries. The Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, while declaring the three-day workshop open, says the federal government decided to be a party to the United Nations Convention on the Protection and Use of Transboundary Water Course because transboundary water cooperation is crucial for peace, conflict prevention, and sustainable development. This uh, rhymes very well with all the things that we're trying to do uh, in repositioning the water resource sector in Nigeria. And the issues are, of course, sustainable water resources management, uh, uh, protecting our ecosystem. Uh, our roadmap also is tied to the sustainable development goals, uh, which is also a key component uh, that is recognized by this convention. Some officials of the United Nations Water Convention added that the decision by the federal government to be part of it will eventually promote water security for all Nigerians. You may have uh, small countries, big countries together, you may have with different interests together and that uh, will give you a common platform to negotiate and to find a reasonable composition. Joining the Water Convention can strengthen uh, national water management and national water governance. Um, it can also help to address challenges uh, which countries, including Nigeria, face, such as uh, water pollution. In 2018, Chad and Senegal became the first African parties to the convention, followed by Ghana in 2020 and Guinea-Bissau, as well as Togo in 2021. In Abuja, Thomas Obetere, NTA News. The global population is projected to reach 8 billion on the 15th of November this year, with Nigeria's population estimated at more than 216 million people. Key players in population management are strengthening efforts to harness the potential of rapid population growth towards achieving demographic dividends and sustaining development goals. Ulusheya Diago has details. Nigeria is among eight countries sustaining the world population growth and by 2050, its population is estimated to reach 400 million. While each country faces its own unique set of population challenges and opportunities, Nigeria's current fertility rate is put at 5.3, becoming youth population and rapid urbanization with high unemployment and security issues. Nigeria must accelerate efforts to ensure greater bodily autonomy for the women and girls to ensure they will harness the benefits of our fast-growing population. Only when each of us has the power to make this fundamental decision about our health, bodies, and futures. The federal government of Nigeria is a catalyst to support the state government, but the state government is responsible for the provision of services for their citizens, all health services including family planning. For these population managers, protecting the rights and choices of women and girls is paramount since they are actively involved in childbearing. To have the right information, evidence or data for measuring and predicting likely demographic shifts, we need to hold a census that will provide current, reliable and acceptable data required for addressing the different needs of the various population groups. The National Population Commission and its partners are resolute that the coming population and housing census will produce valid data. Nigeria needs to inform decisions and planning. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiagbo, NC News. This is the news desk at 6 on NTA News 24. More reports ahead. Do stay with us.
Welcome back. The federal government is strengthening its social network towards the enhancement of welfare of the elderly through inclusive policy drive as the National Senior Citizens Center commemorates its first year anniversary. Ian John reports. About 12.5% of the global citizens are said to be within the circle of the aged population, with increasing advocacy for their welfare and social security. Nigeria is not an exception of the sad statistics and the matching words with action. The federal government is designing more platforms to uplift their lives and status under the mandate of the National Senior Citizens Center. We work together in the implementation of the policies and strategies on aging as we all look forward to enhancing the dignity, capacities, security, and well-being of all that persons. Thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for bringing in on board this very important center. The theme, Cascading Innovative Strategy Programs, Partnerships, and Stakeholders Engagement indicates that NSCC is now adequately positioned to meet its obligation. And to further demonstrate strong will in carrying out innovative reforms, the center's head office and other committees were inaugurated, with the NTA as one of the awardees and strategic partner in meeting the federal government's target for senior citizens. In Abuja, Ian Ray John, NTA News. Bearing in mind the importance of reaching out to the needy, China is partnering Nigeria to provide soccer for internally displaced persons, IDPs. Ruth Aguele reports that China's Central Chamber of Commerce and the Nigeria-China Friendship Association, in collaboration with a non-governmental organization, organized a feeding intervention for IDP camp in Durumi in the Federal Capital Territory. It is a big day for internally displaced persons at Durumi Camp in the Federal Capital Territory as they make preparations awaiting the arrival of their unusual visitors. Here comes their guests with various items to give them a sense of belonging. It is not every day foreigners come visiting, which explains the joy here. This is a feeding intervention by the Chinese community in collaboration with a non-governmental organization as part of efforts to extend more support to Nigeria and strengthen its long-standing relations. No matter how difficult it is we face today and how dumping the road is, if we stand together, if we help each other, and then we will conquer all the difficulties and we will change our future. If we want to wash your, the hand clean, she will right hand watch left hand. So we are brothers. We see so many young children here because the young generation is our hope and tomorrow. And the hope for them is that both the leadership of Nigeria and the leadership of Chinese in Nigeria has something very great in, in stock for them. For the IDPs, this gesture is worth celebrating. I'm very, very amazing today because of our strangers that, that came to us today. The gesture, they say, will go beyond giving them fish, but also teach them how to fish, to bring hope for a better tomorrow. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NT News. Acting Corps Marshal, Federal Safety Corps, Dauda Alibu, has cautioned operatives of the Corps against incivility, patrol misconduct, and unprofessional behavior in the discharge of their duties. In this inaugural virtual meeting with zonal commanding officers, he called for the increased surveillance on all operational fronts and more importantly, engage staff continually for sustained value reorientation. He cautioned against all forms of extortion, bribery and corruption and any kind of misconduct by patrolmen stating that the FRSC management will not tolerate indiscipline as well as any unprofessional conduct that will bring disrepute to the image of the core. 
The acting court must shall emphasize that field operations must be intelligence driven and personnel must be aware and understand the peculiar challenges within their general operation areas and adjust operational activities to boost intelligence gathering. In quote, we need to document history so that people coming after us can see things in their true perspectives, end of quote. This was the message of media veteran Cordelia Ukoma to guests at the launch of her book, Accidental Journalist in Nigeria's Political and Economic History. Oyeyemi Ajayi reports that the book comes as part of activities marking her retirement from service after 35 years of active journalism with the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. For some, putting pen to paper is a Herculean task, which they avoid when they can. But for Cordelia Ukwama, it is what she did for 35 years as a journalist working with the Nigerian Television Authority. The 15th chapter book, Accidental Journalist in Nigeria's Political and Economic History, is an autobiography which captures Ukwama's life and her work in journalism, something she was initially unprepared for, but one which became her passion. In the course of her professional career, she was involved in such high-octane engagements as covering an international sporting event, the Under-16 Junior Handball Tournament in 1989. For many, her experience and vast knowledge is worthy of sharing, with emphasis that women must begin to document their achievements for the younger generation to apply. This is part of the history of Nigeria now, and we need people to document their experiences. So for she to have been able to combine this with her line of duty, it's very commendable. Women in NTA are doing good. I also wrote a book, so she has written one. I, uh, uh, Eugenia Abutu has written. I hope that more women would write. I never set out to be a journalist, but I fell in love with the job and uh, it's a passion that kept me moving. That passion kept me going. And uh, I'll be a journalist for life. No, I think the NT has a deliberate plan to ensure that uh, the senior ones mentor the younger generation. There is a need for continuity. The 238-page book chronicles not only the author's role, but also the role of the largest television station in Africa, NTA, towards the nation's growth and development. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, wants Nigerians to remain united amidst security challenges for the progress of the country. The SGF stated this during the valedictory church service in honor of outgoing president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Dr. Samson Ayokunle. Joseph Otsen was there. Christian hymns setting up the atmosphere for the valedictory service for Dr. Samson Ayokunle who served as president of the Christian Association of Nigeria for six years. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boz Mustafa, and other personalities who attended the event focus their messages on the strength of unity in trying moments. The church was the custodian of wisdom and knowledge. My prayer is that the church, even in times like this, must return to its primary responsibility of praying for the nation, of giving direction to the nation. Remember all of us who are in public office in prayers to use our office and use public money for public good. Our voices are no longer the same, both in the church and concerning the people of Nigeria. The various ethnic nationalities are singing in this conduct to us. Let us rise up and work with God to ensure that we serve Him and we obey Him. The leading factor for insecurity today in Nigeria is economic action. One, national fairness. We need to begin to solve problems that have led Nigerians to, 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 to go into the crime. Dr. Ayo was elected camp president in 2016 and re-elected for the second term in office after the then mandatory three years. 
in Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Next sports update. Team Nigeria got their Commonwealth Games campaign off to a smashing start as the trio of Esta Uribamishi, Edem Ofiong and Fatima Atinuke Bilu all recorded landslide victories in their group openers in the women's table tennis events. Edem Ofiong, who is Nigeria's top seed, finished with a 3-0 victory over her St. Vincent and Grenadines counterpart Leah Kumbabach. It was the same result in the women's doubles where the duo of Ofiong Edem and Fatima Atinuke Bilu ran over tournament debutants Unika Velox and Leah Kumbabach. In the men's category, it was a replica of performances as the trio of African top seed Haruna Kwadri, Olajide Omotayo and Amadi Ome all trounced their South African counterparts 3-0 in both singles and doubles. Meanwhile, England registered strong intent in victory on home soil as they scooped the first gold medal of the Games in men's triathlon on day one. New Zealand came in second for silver, while Australia registered third for bronze. You've been watching News Desk at 6 on NTA News 24. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to join NTA in the campaign against rape and rapism. I'm Lydia Ojiochi. Good evening. Bank urges Nigerians to resist the urges succumbing to the speculative.